I think I will just put my female voice into that, like just telling you the story how we made Fongar, which is called Prisoners. Um, it happened, like Gisli said, we're fr from the theatre, and uh, I just had my first child, and I was just walking uh, with it in the pram, and I just read an article about mothers in prison. And I was just like, yeah, of course, oh my God, there's mothers in prison. And Unnur, my uh, colleague, she was also, had just had her first baby, and we were meeting, drinking our coffee latte with our uh, prams. And she had just read this article as well, and we were got so inspired, just like, oh my God, all these mothers in prison, and nobody's thinking about them, and how, how does it work, and how is this world? And, and Iceland is small, so we just uh, thought, we should visit them. So we just put, uh, took the, the phone call, called the prison and said, hi, we're two actresses, uh, can we come and visit? And the prison said, yeah, uh, uh, wait, just let me ask. And then he came back to us and said, yeah, you can come, when do you want to come? And we went like, uh, now or tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow is fine, okay, bye. So the next day we went uh, to the prison and met all the inmates and it was amazing to hear the stories, to be in the prison, to uh, feel the claustrophobic thing of it, to hear the stories of all these women, all of them had been sexually abused. Um, you know, some in the, in, in the childhood, some when they started their life, a lot of drugs, and all of them were like, in the end of their ropes, do you know what I mean? Uh, so me and Unir, we visit them a lot, and we didn't know what we were going to do with this story, and we just, maybe we were gonna make a theater play about it, maybe we were gonna do a documentary, and then we started to think and think, and then we decided the best way to do it was to do a TV series. Then we could give the, all of them space. And it took us nine years, yeah because uh, it was quite difficult and we were working a lot in the theater and stuff and it was hard to get money and, and we always like, oh, it's too difficult, we just push it away. But the inmates always crawled up off our back and knocked our uh, shoulder like, are you not going to tell my story? You have to tell my story, you have to tell my story. And in the end, we uh, made it and it went really well and I think, uh, the, the chief of the prison in Iceland, he came to us and said, thank you so, so much. Because it helped to put focus on uh, just all the jails, and especially, of course, female uh, inmates, and he got more money. Uh, the politicians were uh, uh, able to listen through the media. Um, so he was really thankful and he's always like coming, oh, thank you girls, are you you're not making series two? And yes, we are. We're making series two about keeping into the stories of these inmates. Um, yeah, the female voice of it, uh, I think there are not, like Sirion and Gisli are saying, there are not so many writers in Iceland um, and me and Unnur, we are not writers, we're actresses, but we get fine ideas. So we uh, put together a collaboration with uh, great writers and um, that made our series and we you know, made the story together and they wrote it out. Uh, and yeah, I think what we are doing, like because we are women, looking into women's life, that that's our way to put perspective of on you know the women voices and the women's stories um, I don't think you need a woman to do it but of course you know you have more interest in looking into other women when you're a woman I don't know um, at least we, we made a series about a lot of women in different classes in the society and yeah we were really proud of it um, now I'm doing uh, another series, which I'm not producing. I'm just uh, an actress in it, and it's um, uh, I'm playing a cop, which is a lead, and she is um, having the first serial killer in Iceland, I think. I don't know, are you making serial killers? In? No. So yeah, so then my next project is doing um, a 
in uh, solving a serial killer uh, in Iceland. Yeah, uh, I don't, you know, just have... Uh, I have the trailer if you want to see, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of the first episode, uh, of the first episode of uh, Fongar, so... I want to start with the first episode of Fongar, so... Do you want to start with the first episode of Fongar? I want to start with the first episode of Fongar. I want to talk very well, so you don't have to do it. Vitnis á þig ganga burt frá húsinu, engin merki um einhver annar hafi verið að verki, blóð úr brotafóla á höndunum þínum og í fatnaði. Og hvað þarf að vera þetta lengi? Svona fjögur til sex ár fyrir tilröndum mandrápsi. Ef hins vegar, pappi einlega verið ekki af, þá er þú ekki að fara að losna útfyrir eftir 12-14 ár. Hvernig gat þetta gert? Ég átti ekki að lusta á okkur. Ég hefði bara leitt mér að eiga við hann og minna hátt. Það hefði þetta aldrei gerst. Þetta er ekki mér að kenna. Ekki heldur pappa. Þetta er Linda. Geturðu sagt mér eitthvað um ástæðu árasarinnar? Þetta var óvenju ábeldisvöld. Fór ekki þetta að þessa. Já, samt. Buffaði gaurinn. Lísbætt. Ég ætla að byrja um að skrifa niður allt sem getur nýst okkur. Hvað gerðist, hvenar, hvað mannstu, allt skilur þau. Af hverju ætti ég að treysta þér? Hvað gerða það þér? So if you have any questions. We sold it a lot around the world, um, of course to all the Scandinavian countries, and then AMC bought it, and it's uh, in all the English-speaking languages in their uh, like paid TV thing, um, to Spain, um, yeah, all around. We just kept on, you know, developing it, and then we left it, you know, and we because we're so busy in the theater and doing other things, so we just like, Okay, no, we're not making it. It's too hard, you know. I mean, and then we, no, we're not going to do it. But then it, the story just went like, nah, nah, nah. you have to tell my story. So yeah, you know, we were not working on it for nine years straight. But it took us nine years from we went to the prison until we had uh, the premiere. And what was the feedback of the of the of the? It audience? was amazing. Uh, it was like. 90% of the nation was watching it and you know it was uh, it just went and yeah we were really happy with it mainly women no think? i think everybody just both men and women yeah do you think that, you know making such a giving such a female voice to a show is kind of limiting the the, the target of a, of a show do you think you can appeal to both male and women yeah, with, with female so. shows definitely and you know the issue is uh, sexual abuse, and you know it happens in all states of th society, and we were like putting focus on that, and you know that's been happening in Iceland that high class people, the the, the women are stepping out, and this is before me too, mm -hmm. so we were really proud that we were uh, <laughs> before the wave. Before the, before the wave. Mm. Yeah, I <laughs> think so. I think you know. Um, and maybe also because you know we're we're focusing on women. Like in in the last movies we have been uh, doing in Iceland, it's uh, mainly female characters, strong female characters. Um, and I think also you know people are realizing that we are interesting as well. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't, yeah. And do you think this is becoming a trend, seeing, watching females playing characters played by men, complex characters, evil characters, <laughs> unattractive characters? Yeah, you know, m maybe it's just, we just did a, a theater uh, performance and uh, we did Othello and I played Iago. And oh, really? uh, yeah, uh, and we got a lot of these questions, uh, you know, isn't it hard for you to play a, such a bad person? And I was just like, women can also be bad. So I think, you know, 
it's just we're just opening into seeing all the variations of characters and it's all about representation you can see it if you don't play it and yeah exactly <laughs> Can I add one thing? Yes, please. I mean, because we've done so much theatre and like at, on the women issue, I mean, the, the theatre world is run by men. The main writers are men. Uh, they write for men. Um, uh, and, and not to be pre prejudiced or anything, but also like a lot of the guys running the theatres are gay. Not that it matters, but you know, they, they, ha they are interested in men. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, I've I've been all over the world, like doing theater, like a lot in Germany, and it's run by men, and so we're like always telling stories about men, and uh, I think it's a uh, we've we've never now now it's uh, beginning to like women are beginning to write about women, and uh, I think it's interesting because it's uh, we haven't seen that much of it, and like you say with when she played Iago. It's a 400-year-old play, and this is the first time in the history of theater, in 400 years, that a woman played Iago. You know, which just tells you, like, and what? They her like a woman. Yeah. Because some women have played it. No, just two women in the world had played Iago as a guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's the first time Iago was just a, a woman, an evil woman. So archetypes can change, actually. Yeah. We, we have to change them. Eh, vamos a justitos ya para la última presentación. Thank you so much, Thank you. the three of you.